about Tyra. If you're a gay teen growing up in the hood, homosexuality can be downright dangerous. You get stabbed, beaten, shot. Tyra's going into the projects to rescue a teen before it's too late. Plus, I've been out on the streets since I was 14. A transsexual teen selling her body. Why choose prostitution? As long as I have at least $100, I have my next meal. That's not the only way to make money. It all new Tyra starts now. Tyra show on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> All righty. I see some standing ovations over there. Okay, well, then I think that you all know that I love the gays and the gays love me. <laughs> yes. And I've been in the fashion industry since I was 15 years old, a junior in high school. And the fashion industry is extremely accepting, even embracing people who are gay. And while the fashion industry is really accepting, even, even embracing um, people who are gay, it's not always that way for gays in the inner city. In fact, being gay in the hood can leave you ridiculed, it can leave you excommunicated, and you can even be the victim of violent attacks. Growing up in the inner city is rough. At times, one can face poverty. The average income for Newark residents is $13,000. The lure of drugs, gang violence, you have blood, you have Fred, Latin King. And the lack of decent jobs. But for teens struggling with their sexual identity, trying to survive the inner city streets is almost impossible. I experience sexual harassment on a daily basis. In the projects, being gay is not accepted. They should make it illegal to be gay. I'm just disgusted and, and, and fed up with the whole gay pride and everything. They face additional obstacles, like gay bashing. I was coming out of work and, you know, they just saw me, the guys, and they decided to, you know, jump me and my boyfriend. HIV. Newark has the highest rates of HIV infection for the state of New Jersey. And open hostility. I'm not gay and I don't condone it, so I wouldn't want it around me. I think somebody needs to do something about that. For many, there's no place where they can find relief from being gay in the ghetto. You all probably know my first guest from America's Next Top Model, and when you see him, he always looks happy and joyful, and he's teaching the girls how to pose and do all these interesting voguing poses. But you wouldn't guess that he's had a really hard life and knows firsthand what gay teens experience in the hood. He's the father of the House of Ninja. Benny Ninja, come on out here. You're so happy, runway walk out here, so nice. You, you, you're so s full of such light. That's why I wanted you on America's Next Top Model. But I didn't know that you experienced gay bashing. You experienced feeling so outcast. Tell me about that growing up. Well, um, it was very hard, Tyra. You have to understand, first of all, from the background of who I am, um, three things against me, um, white, black, and gay. Mm -hmm. So growing up in where I came from is a very small town in Westchester, and gay wasn't known. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a neighborhood where Latino and blacks were very, very dominant, but to be interracial, white and black, it wasn't known. The one thing I did get by on was the fact that I looked Puerto Rican, so I didn't get messed with so much on the color the race side. The race side of it. But to be gay, first of all, in the town that I was in, in a school of a thousand kids in my, in my graduating class, I was the first person that was gay. Mm. So I was so the one. did you feel like the only person? I was the only one. Wow. And I was the one that was picked on. So when anybody had something to say or wanted to um, out, out, 
if anybody wanted to, to, to throw their fears out or their uncomfortability, it was put on me. Can you tell me about the basketball game, the, bill, the bullying incident oh, at the basketball game. Um, as you all can see, I'm not the sports person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was playing basketball one day in gym class, and I had one of my teachers um, knew that I wasn't the sports type. Basketball wasn't the game that I was into. Now, mm -hmm. you wanted me to go outside and play jump rope? I could do jump rope real good, go do some <laughs> gymnastics. I could flip real cute. <laughs> Um, but to run up and down the court and to try to make balls in a basket wasn't my thing. So one of the kids that had picked me to be on his team, I guess, was a little uncomfortable with the whole gay thing and always had comments, you know, um, Ben Gay, mm. Benny Bendover. I mean, anything mm. you could think of with the word Ben and to humiliate me was made possible and it was through him. So this one game I refused to play. I didn't give my all in the game and he got so upset that he came over to me and took both of his hands and slammed me in my ears, mm. but I, I didn't hear right for the longest time. Then he decided to take the basketball and throw it in my face, bust my lip. I went upstairs to the principal, complained about it. Nothing got done. Nothing got done. Do you think Nothing it's because you were done. gay? It was because I was gay. Because and you were because gay. Because many of my teachers had issues with my sexuality mm -hmm. to the point where they would call my mother at home and tell her to make sure that they put me in counseling. Um, to try to counsel the gay out of you. Yeah, I've even had a teacher slap me. Really? Yeah. Why do you think they're the hardest in the black community, the Latin communities, on gays? I think because we're just hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We commit more crime to ourselves than any other community could mm -hmm. do to us. They just sit back and watch. But you're the father of the House of Ninja. I am will you, will the you explain, of the house. explain what that is? Because there are a lot of children and kids out here that have nowhere to go. They don't have a supporting they mother don't. like you have. They don't have the self esteem that you have. And they end up doing a lot of negative things, these gay kids that have nowhere to go. Um, what a house does basically is we deal with all of your issues. We deal with issues from sexuality to making sure that you protect yourselves, to making sure that you're not on mm -hmm. drugs. And if you are, how are we going to clean you up? How and are we going to fix you? What happens when people don't have that safe place? What are the things that can happen to them? Um, well, they become prostitutes, they become drug addicts, they, become, they steal. Mm -hmm. And the worst of all is they end up dead. And that's exactly what we do not want to happen to the teen that you're about to meet. He can totally relate to Benny. He knows how strongly many people feel about gays in the inner city, and that's because he is gay and lives in one of New York's toughest neighborhoods. Richard is a gay teen living in Spanish Harlem. By any standard, it's a rough place to grow up. But for Richard, the constant homophobic torment has become unbearable. I knew growing up being gay in my environment was gonna make me a target because there's not a lot of people like me in my neighborhood. It's not accepting at all. Being called a faggot, walking in my building, being called gay, sucker. Every day I live in fear. You get jumped, you get cut, shot. It's not somewhere you would wanna grow up at. It's not somewhere you wanna live. Every morning, I always have to worry about what I'm wearing, if I look too gay, too colorful. So I feel like I'm in prison, and I feel like I can't go nowhere. I feel like I can't be myself. I wish I had somebody to talk to. Yeah, every day, I feel isolated and alone, and I actually wish that I was like regular other guys and straight guys, but there's nothing I can do about it. My dream is actually to not be here for the rest of my life, because one day, I feel like it'll, it'll all end the wrong way. I actually visit Richard in his home, and um, you'll see that meeting, that surprise meeting, when we come back. We'll be right back. <laughs> up next, I make a surprise visit to Richard, oh and he opens up to me about the dangers of being gay like blanked in out, the inner city. And he's like, I'm walking down the block, and they started punching me, slapping me, um, calling me a faggot, calling me gay. Did you think you were going to die? And later, a tormented transgender teen sells her body on the street to survive. The first time I ever got raped on a straw. A date had cut me, but not doing it well enough, I guess. Growing up gay is hard enough for most kids, but if you're a gay teen growing up in the hood or the projects, homosexuality can be downright dangerous. Now, before the break, we met Richard, who didn't have a lot of people in his life to talk to, and I wanted to do something about that. Check it out. Few stories touch me like Richard's. 
I know how cruel kids can be. And I wanted to help him. 